What's up, YouTube? I hope everyone's doing well out there on the internet. Um, I just wanted to um, make a really um, deep, open video about um, life as a trombonist, basically, as a professional musician. Um, I was thinking um, these past few weeks, um, actually a few months, um, I got married this last November. Um, and I'm in my new apartment, so that's super cool. Um, but I got married this last November, and I realized the minute I got back from my honeymoon, I have basically been working nonstop, besides Christmas and New Year's. My first day off was this yesterday, on Monday. I think it's been my first full day off where I didn't have to be somewhere for almost three months. And um, that's kind of crazy. Um, and I, ha I have a lot of... I have a lot to say about it. I have a lot to feel about it. And I felt concerned about it. So I wanted to make a, a video, post it on the channel, because it is music and trombone related. But um, anytime I make one of these talking videos, um, I love to encourage people. Um, I can be a re real people person sometimes. Um, and I always like to encourage people. Um, I always say to myself, if I had a time machine, I'd go back in time to when I was struggling with things and just tell myself certain things. Like, it's going to be okay and, and this and that. But I was thinking about where I am now in my journey as a musician and what it took not to say that I made it or that I'm a big a big shot or whatever but um I'll get to that in a second but I want to kind of talk about my journey how I how I ended up here and uh, maybe give some encouragement to anyone else that was in my shoes when I was maybe for example 15, 16, 17, 18, back when I was in high school years ago. Um, and, and just say a few notes that I have. Um, if I could go back and change anything, I don't think I would. Um, but if I can help anyone else to maybe mentally prepare for what was to come with them choosing to be a professional musician... I would say a few things, but I, I want to mention real quick, um, this video popped into my head or actually the idea to make this video popped into my head because I got home last, this last weekend and I was just swamped. Like I had hit my wall. I was like, I am so busy and I guess it just didn't hit me until this last weekend. Like, like, how did I get here? How did I get from one day questioning, what am I going to do to getting to this point of, oh my goodness, I am so busy. And I, I was like, why am I busy? And then I thought about what did it take to get here? Because then I thought to myself, I said, you know, I, I don't really toot my own horn very, horn very much. I'm very hard on myself. But I said, wow, I just feel like I am so busy. But I also feel like I'm in a really good place. That I feel somewhat successful. That I feel pretty satisfied with where I'm at currently um, in my life as a when it comes to at least playing um, music professionally. Um, and I made some mental notes, and that's why I wanted to make this video. And the note that I took home from in my head was that when it comes to a craft, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the trombone, although it does apply to this. 
I thought about this word. You have to be obsessed with your craft. You have to live and breathe this stuff. Like, I play pretty much every day. And it's not because someone's telling me to. It's like, hey, and no one's like, hey, Nathan, you have to practice this. I've literally become a well-oiled machine when it comes to this idea of being obsessed with your craft. And I think if, if you are not obsessed with your craft, I don't think you have what it takes to pursue it in a professional way. Now, as a hobbyist, that is something completely different. I'm talking about you are going for it as a performer and you have committed yourself and you are ready to just put the grit in and hone in your craft. Um, and I, that just really rang with me. And I think um, if I could go back and tell myself what was to come, I would tell myself, Get ready to be obsessed with your craft. I literally spent this last Saturday, I don't know, I, I what did I do? I was so busy. And I want to use this day as an example because this is just like like this is what this is what it takes. So this last Saturday I had a rehearsal in the morning and then I had a gig at night. And then Sunday, I had a gig in the morning, and then I had a rehearsal at night. And this moment that popped my head of being obsessed and always being on a grind. I always use that word, too. You have to always be on a grind if you want to make it as a, prof as a professional. Um, and like I said earlier, I don't want to say that I made it, but I want to say that in this part of my life that I'm in, I feel like I'm doing what I set out to, to accomplish. Well, I'll get what I'll get to in a minute, but I got home in between the morning gig and the night gig and I didn't come home and rest. I actually came home. I started writing horn parts and I pra I literally practiced and I think I played trombone almost the entire day from seven o'clock in the morning until 1030. Because I had a morning gig. When I came home, I was practicing and arranging horn parts. And then in my five-hour rehearsal, we were almost playing the entire time. So besides the times I was driving or not playing, like, or not eating or sleeping, I was playing. Um, and you know what the beautiful part about it is? I never think to myself man, I really hate this, or, ah, oh, this is such a drag, or, oh my goodness, this is horrible. Um, I don't, because it doesn't, because if you're obsessed with it, it's not going to feel like work to you. It's kind of like eat, like, think of your favorite snack, and think if you got to eat as much as you wanted of that snack without having it have any repercussions on your body, that's kind of what I think about this. When you're eating your favorite snack, you're not thinking to yourself, oh man, I'm eating a lot of this or this. You're just simply enjoying it. And that's how I have felt with choosing a career um, playing the trombo trombone professionally. Um, not to say that it's all I do. I do teach. I do. I teach private lessons and I'm also a band director as well. But Anytime I'm not teaching, um, I'm gigging on the weekends. And when I'm not teaching, I'm at a rehearsal at night. Um, and if I'm not teaching, I'm usually playing the trombone. Um, now, that's not to say that you shouldn't put your life on hold or anything or not put other things, making sure you have other priorities. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm noticing with this generation, there's this, there's this real like, watch your stress level and this and that and everything's handed to you with the internet nowadays and I just I have this fear that this next generation myself included that we're not being taught proper work etiquette and I feel like when it comes to work etiquette 
I'll use a trombone example, and I keep using this word because it's just so true, that you have to be obsessed with your craft. You have to live and breathe it. You have to spend time with it. You, and there's no, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcut to getting better on the trombone. You sit down, you practice your fundamentals every day for a year. You're going to sound better. You're not, you're not going to go backwards. Um, but I, I was just really thinking this last weekend, like, wow, like, I really feel like, um, if I could say like I made it, um, I hate saying the word I made it. Um, but I do think back to when I was in high school and I was talking to my wife about with, um, about this the other day and came to a realization that when people would ask me what I wanted to do as a career when I was younger, younger -er, at least, um, I eventually came to the conclusion, and this was the conclusion. I said, I don't really know, but I want to play and teach music. Um, and truth be told, I was kind of right. Like, it's what I ended up doing. Am I playing full-time? Am I teaching full-time? Not exactly. I'm kind of doing part-time both, but even though they're both part-time, I'm spending almost full-time with both of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of my um, income is from teaching and it's from playing. Like, I, it used to not be like that for me. And then um, I just started saying yes to things and I, I got better. I told myself I want to get better. And when I was in high school, I told myself, I said, like, people were always telling me, like, oh, man, you're really good. And then I was like, oh, thanks. And they were like, no, no, you're, like, really good. Um, and like I said, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm I'm um, explaining this to maybe anyone that is going through the same thing. Um, and I... I had no idea what was ahead of me. Absolutely no idea. But all I had with me in my back pocket was this obsession. This obsession with that I love this instrument. And I love music. And I want to put them together. And I want to perform. I want to play in front of thousands of people all the time. And I want to... I want to just play, but I also like teaching. So I ended up doing both. But um, I think about my good friend that was a French horn player, and unfortunately he passed away of cancer um, a while ago. But he, when I was first kind of starting to play professionally, he asked me, do you want to be a professional musician? And I said... I said, yes, there's really nothing else I could see myself doing. And then he said, he said, that's the right answer. And he said, the advice he gave to me was, if you can see yourself doing something else, go do that. But if in your heart, you know that you want to pursue music and, and play, and that's all you can see yourself doing, then, then you know what it takes. And I think what all those people have in common is an obsession with their craft that you have to work really, really hard. I work my tail off. And I just realized this last weekend, like, like I thought back to my old high school self. And if I could go back, I would, I would just say, it's going to take a lot of work. But if this is what you want to do, then you have to go for it. But it's going to take a lot of grit, a lot of focus, a lot of um, intentional practicing, a lot of um, frustration comes along with it. But along with the frustration comes that wonderful gratification, knowing that at the end of the day, um, you played music for someone that might have needed it. And I'll end, this, I'll end this video with this. Um, at Arizona State University, there's a wonderful, um, Brad Edwards is a wonderful trombonist that teaches, um, has a trombone studio of incredible trombonists. 
And um, on the practice room door, it says something like, surgeons practice their craft so they can save lives. When you practice, you don't know um, where someone is at in their life when they come to perform. Maybe um, someone close to them had recently passed away. Maybe they got some really terrible news. You don't know what's going on, but you don't know if that music could um, change someone's life or really fix their day. Um, and I just re I really love that mentality that that's how powerful music is. And that's that's one of the reasons I fell in love with it. So encouragement to anyone, if you want to pursue a, a career playing professionally, you have to be obsessed with their craft. You have to work hard. You have to have a lot of grit and you have to live and breathe this. And if all of those things sound like you, you have what it takes. And I would have told myself that in high school because I, I was always super down on myself and like, I don't want to get go into a career in music. I should become a business major. And no, I um I stuck to I stuck to my guns and my guts, and I knew that this was what I wanted. And I started saying yes to everything, and I I um I practiced really hard. And now I I play professionally, and most of my income is from playing. And uh, I also love teaching, also. So, um, anyways. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't. Have a great day, guys, and happy practicing.